the launch two or three days afterward the recorder was brought in and I had to type the onboard tapes and to be sure and let them know when I came to the part about the fireflies and I said fireflies and they said fireflies you'll know and sure enough I did um, it was the part where John Glenn was talking about the sparks that he called fireflies flying past the porthole and he said, there's a whole stream of them. It looks like fireflies. And I forget who the capsule communicator was, but he said, are they talking to you, John? And uh, <laughs> of course, he laughed, but it wasn't really funny. Friendship 7, Grimus, if uh, you have a chance, could you give us a blood pressure check? Over. Hey, Roger. Friendship 7, uh, we'll give a blood pressure check. Uh, I still have some of these particles that I cannot identify coming around the capsule occasionally. Over. Uh, Roger, how big are these particles? Over. Uh, very small. I would indicate they're of the order of a sixteenth of an inch or smaller. Uh, they drift by the window, and uh, I can see them against the dark sky. Uh, just, as it, just at sunrise, there were literally thousands of them. They looked like just a myriad of stars. Over. Climus LOS. LOS. Loss of signal. Wymus has lost contact, and Friendship 7 streaks home, an unseen comet darting across the land of its origin. Canaveral contact, how do you copy, over? Uh, Friendship 7 uh, to Canaveral, uh, read you loud and clear, how me, over? Roger, Friendship 7, Canaveral contact, read loud and clear, stand by with Capcom, please. Roger. Uh, Roger, still reading you. Uh, 7, this is Cape Coda, be now. Hello, uh, Roger, this is Friendship 7. Friendship 7, this is Bermuda. trouble aboard Friendship 7. A malfunction in the automatic control system was causing the spacecraft to yaw in skid-like fashion, away from its proper flight attitude. But Glenn is overriding the faulty system and now manually controls Friendship 7 on fly-by-wire, directing its movements by hand control, much like a pilot flies a plane. Friendship 7, this is Colonel Capcom standing by. Friendship 7, we have a telemetry solid and check all your systems out okay. Uh, we will remind you to start the pre dark side uh, checklist as soon as you lose contact with us. Friendship 7. Friendship 7, this is Muge, come take. Friendship 7, this is Muge, come take. Do read, over. Okay, this is Friendship 7, to me. Under Friendship 7, Muge, Capcom. Uh, will you confirm that your landing bag switch is in the off position? Over. Uh, that is affirmative. Landing bag switch is in the center off position. All right, Roger. You haven't had any uh, banging noises or anything of this type at higher rates. Negative. All right, Roger. This, they wanted this answer. Right. Masked behind that routine report, the first hint of potential disaster. It came when astronaut Cooper relayed a request from Mercury Control, asking Glenn to check the status lights for the capsule's landing impact bag. Glenn reports, status normal. But ground stations are now receiving an ominous chilling signal, an indication that the heat shield on Friendship 7 seems to have come loose. Friendship 7, Hawaii contact. Hawaii, Friendship 7, over. Friendship 7, this is Hawaii Capcom. Uh, do you still consider yourself go for the next orbit? Affirmative. I am go for the next orbit. Roger, understand it. MCC confirms that they are go at the present time for third orbit. Friendship 7, Friendship 7, this is California Comtech. California Comtech, do you read? Over. Hello, California Comtech, Friendship 7, loud and clear, how me? Roger, Friendship 7, this is California Capcom, read your loud and clear, John. Uh, Roger, repeating you much better now, Wally, uh, very good. Uh, uh, John, the Aero Meds are real happy with you, you look real good up there. Let you goodbye this time. We'll see you next time around. This is Mercury Control. We now have a contact with our Guaymas, Mexico station and with the Corpus Christi, Texas tracking station. The Friendship 7 spacecraft is now committed to its third orbit. This is Mercury Control. In Mercury Control at Cape Canaveral, a decision must be made and soon.
the signal pulsing down from Friendship 7 indicates still that the heat shield is loose. Could the signal be erroneous? There is no way to tell. But if it's true, then John Glenn could perish in a searing inferno when he plunges back into the atmosphere. The retro rockets that slow the spacecraft and head it back toward Earth are strapped over the shield. If they were left on after retro fire, instead of being jettisoned as in normal re-entry, then their straps might hold the shield in place before they burn off. They might possibly save Glenn from the 3,000 degrees of re-entry heat until he's deep enough into the atmosphere for its force to hold the shield in place. But the decision must be made soon. Even now, Glenn is streaking toward the United States and he must begin the retro sequence 300 miles west of California if he's to land in the planned recovery area 700 miles south and east of Florida. We'll give you the countdown uh, for retro sequence time, John. You're looking good. Uh, Roger, we only have five zero seconds to retrograde. Over. Uh, that's a firm. I'll give you a mark. Uh, 45 mark. California, uh, California. this is Cape Flight. Go ahead, Cape Flight. Uh, we'd like to leave the package on at least through Texas. So keep, tell him to keep his retro jettison switch off. Uh, John, leave your retro pack on uh, through your pass over Texas. 20 Please. seconds. Roger. Uh, while you're 